we are back on Twitch, yay! So we're gonna keep the goodness going, right? We have heard so many great services, so many great things going on. Gotta keep that going for you guys. So I am very happy to announce another team, service team members have grown, joined me. They love me, really, they do. So guys, you guys are from the fantastic Dynamo DB team, am I correct? We yeah. are. Yes, okay, so introduce yourselves. So I'm Chase, I'm a software developer on Dynamo over on Tony's team. Okay. And I'm Tony with the DynamoDB engineering team. All right. So we have the real deal here, folks. And we're here to talk about a great launch. Well, it kind of didn't launch today, launched last week, but a launch nonetheless. What are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about point in time recovery. Ha ha. And a little bit more about the DynamoDB backup and restore uh, functionality. Lovely. So. I, I'll share my story afterwards, but tell us about the service so these guys out here can know how cool it is and why they should be as super excited like we are. All right, well, you know, DynamoDB is a database and people put very important data in there and nobody wants to lose their data when Data's they make good. a little mistake, you know, write a little bad code and deploy it and it, you know, overwrites a few things. So you want to have backups. So we have point in time recovery, which takes a continuous backup of your data all the time and it retains it for 35 days. So if you ever make a mistake and say, I didn't mean to do that, I need to go back a minute, you can basically go to a point in time recovery and restore your table to a point in time within the previous 35 days and get your data back. So you're saying instead of me going, oh crap, I really messed this up, and only data I have that's good is now three days ago, I can actually get the data from today yes. ready to go. Yeah, you can get it from today, you, you can get it from a minute ago, a second ago, five days ago, 30 days ago. I'm sold, I don't know about you guys. I, if you destroy things like I do on a consistent basis while you're developing, this will be your friend. Embrace this. So, okay, that's cool. And the guys out on Twitch, I'm sure are very excited, but I want to see something, right? All right, well, Chase yeah. is going to show us how you enable it. Yeah. So we'll All go right. to the quick demo. Um, how hard is it, Chase, to enable it? Not too bad. Uh, so it's all about of uh, one click. All um, right. So let's say I've got some data in my DynamoDB table here. Um, as you can tell, it's uh, kind of a brand new table, but I've decided this is important data now, and I want to make sure it's protected. So I'm going to click Enable on Point in Time Recovery, and you'll get a, a warning that you know we're about to turn it on. Click Enable, and, and that's it. That's it. We're done. That's it. All right. So people are like already asking a bunch of questions. Let's get to them. All right. So Fat So TGT, I hope that was right. Okay. Says point in time. Is it event driven or arbitrarily? It is. Uh, the backups are continuous, and we manage the backups uh, for you, so you don't have to do any backups at all. We're continuously uh, capturing all the changes that are happening to the table and scroll them away and keep them for 35 days. So when you want to restore, you pick a specific time you want to go back to, and we restore a copy of that table into a new table uh, as of that point in time. So that brings up another question then from Yes, holy moly, this is huge, I agree. So, <laughs> some Torpedo Bench asks, how granular is the point in time recovery? Seconds? Second. Second. So you can go back one second, what? you can go back to one hour and one second ago, so the time granularity is one second for, uh, for the restore. Wow, yeah. like one second, so I can mess up a bunch of stuff and yeah. still, I and love And the other this. beauty of this thing is that it, it takes no resources from your workload. So the backups run in a completely separate set of systems and we manage everything for you. So you don't have to provision any throughput on your table for backups. You don't have to do any backups. You don't have to schedule anything. And it has no performance impact on your primary workload. So what's cool about this for me is I, I was building a demo as you kind of could see, and I said, oh, I'm getting a bunch of data back and forth. I'm testing a bunch of things. And it was so simplistic to turn this on. I literally just went into the console and said, click. Yeah. And so we know it's supported in the console. We know it's supported on the CLI. Talk about, as a developer, do I need to do something in my code or no? I just turn it on and it's ready for me. And that's it. You can so. enable it with a CLI, API, or uh, from the console. And we have some tables. We have enabled a, re a point in time restore. And okay. Chase is going to show us how you would restore a table. Let's yeah. do it. All right, so let's say I've screwed something up and I need to go back and undo my screw ups. Um, so I've got a table here with some super important data. Uh, it's got some items in it, and I know one or two of them have been screwed up, so I want to recover. Uh, you'll note that I've already turned on point in time recovery. Great. Um, so I'll go over to the backups tab, 
and you can see here it's enabled, and you can see the periods of time with which we've been protected, um, nice. basically since the time you turned on, Peter. Um, so I've decided I'm going to restore. So I'll click this button, restore at a point in time. I give myself a new table name, restoring our data. I can pick a date and time. Let's say it was yesterday afternoon. It tells me what exactly was the table state and what we're going to get when we restore it. So you can see I have my GSIs in here. You can see what I was provisioned at. Um, and everything's great. So I'm going to click restore. All right, and that's all it does. That's all it does. Yeah, so I was going to ask this question, but it was good to have it on camera just in case people missed it, and I think they did. So as you can see, I was about to type separate table, but I'll, I'll say it out loud. So you guys are asking me on Twitch, let's see, uh, Democrat66 and WC3 Fanboy and a bunch of other people asking about what happens when to my calls when this table is being restored. And if you saw that, it's being restored to a separate table. So voila. Yeah. So, so, you know, yeah, let's talk really about It's really important that we never overwrite your production tables. Exactly. So we always restore to a new table. So this is a new table, and then whatever items you may have overwritten or lost, you can go fish it out of the new table and put it back in your production table, or you can switch your app to the restore table later. But yeah. we do not overwrite production tables because that's another whole set of mistakes <laughs> can, can yeah, happen. That's so, a no-no. Right. We, we know better than to have your calls when that happens. No, we're not going to do yeah. that. So yeah, I just want to call that out because you guys were asking me on Twitch about it, asking on Twitch about it, yeah. separate table. Yeah. Yep. That's, I mean, so really, is it that simple? At this point, that table that you have backed up, if we look at it, it has data. Yeah. yeah, so Let you can see the restoring process going through. Uh -huh. um, so we're not going to take up our whole Twitch time no, on no, this. No, no, we're not going to do that. Um, you can see what it would look like. Um, basically, what we've got is an exact copy of what your data was at that second. Nice. Um, it's got your, your provisioning. It's got your same schema, all the same data, just up to that point. That's fantastic. And this was answered on Twitch too, but again, I think it's really important to, to tell our audience about this. I think I'm really excited about it. Um, someone is asking me about how does this correspond and relate it integrate with DAX? So you want to talk about that? Sure, I mean, uh, the, the point in time restore happens at the table level, so DAX has no uh, uh, awareness that there's backups or restores going on and DAX moves on happily pointing to the production table. There you go. So you guys are asking the questions, we're going to answer them. So um, another thing that I want to talk about with a point in time recovery um, tables, for what scenarios, I mean, this is kind of obvious, but I think it's really important to talk about it. What scenarios do you think this is most impactful? So we have a bunch of backup scenarios, right? And now we're talking about to the second. Yeah. So obviously as the developer, from a development perspective, this is powerful. What about production? Tell, you know, do you have some scenarios where customers are yeah, like, this saved us? So, so we have a couple of other things in, in DynamoDB related to backup and restore. Mm -hmm. So we have the on-demand backups, which we released in November. Yep. And with on-demand backups, you basically go to your table and say, I want to backup right now. Yep. And it makes a full backup of that table. It takes one second usually to execute because we do all the hard work in advance yep. and in the back. And so we create these on-demand backups that you can keep forever. And the purpose of it is for long-term retention and compliance. Let's say your auditors say, I need you to keep a copy of this table every month at the end of the month after we close the books. So you basically use on-demand backups for that. Okay. For, for any time where you feel like you might have an oops, <laughs> is when Pitter comes in. Like, Sometimes we just call it oops recovery. Okay. And the idea is that you know, whether like you're that. doing development or production, accidents do happen. And usually people are involved in accidents. And hence, you, know, you meant to make a change into your staging or your test table, but your code was pointing to production, and you say, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. And, and those are the times where you really wish you could just go back and yeah, clean that, that up. Yeah, just one second right. can I reclaim that, the and time you know, travel thing, right? Everyone yes. knows when you hit that return key and the cold sweat starts, yes. that's what you need Pitter You're for. Like, yeah, and it's, it's kind of like sitting moment. there, yes. and it's running all the time, and it gives you the insurance you need to basically have the ability to go back and save your bacon. I think the one second thing I think still is just blowing me away. Because again, especially as you're developing, those oops moments happen more frequently. Yeah. But 
to your point, oops happens in production. Yes. And this will literally say, I mean, think about how many times people have had an oops in production that brought down customers calling everything, and if they could just go back in that one no. second to get their data, so I it's mean, so powerful. Honestly, we built this because customers have been asking for it, right? So it's, it's not a scenario that we concocted. We, yeah. we have customers <laughs> who call support and say, oh, I accidentally did, you know, so, so this is to help with that situation. We have another question from uh, Cheetah K, and they asked, does the restore table have backup history or of the original table? So the restore table has no linkage to the uh, source table. It is a new table that exists now. It doesn't have a history. If you enable Pitter on the new restore table, then it will start accumulating its history independent of the original chain. You ask, you get the answer. I kind of like draws what Kitten says the service should be named. I kind of agree. AWS Oops Recovery Service. <laughs> I, I kind of like that name. I mean, I, I'm going to put my vote in for that. I don't know how well it's going to go. But Maybe in the next one we name, we'll, uh, we'll put out a vote <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. say. I, I kind of like Oops Recovery Service. It's I'm right. just looking at a marketing guy. He's off the stage looking at me with funny and looks. laughing <laughs> and not happy about that. And so since he can't get to me, I'm voting for Oops Delivery Service because he can't get to me right now. And so, yeah, you, um, so someone wants to ask another uh, question about it. Um, they want to know, are there inner events that get fired when a P, P um, point, well, they, they have the acronym, P-I-T-R, so I'm going to say it exactly like that. I kind of like this, occurs. Um, they thought it'd be really cool to trigger a Lambda event from when a recovery occurs. Any thoughts about that? Um, well, when you, when you fire up a, a point in time restore request, and you either do it from CLI, or you do it from uh, your own code, yep. or you do it from uh, the console, you can fire up other events in that, in that code stream. Um, as part of the restore process itself, we don't fire any events. Okay. So you guys can, maybe that'll be a cool thing for one of you guys to build and share with us out on you know, GitHub. I would love for you guys to tell us how, either how this has saved you or what you've built with this great service. That would be really cool to know here about your feedback. You know, we really, uh, really do things based upon your feedback and we would love to have that. Yeah. So any other things you want to tell us about this? This is way cool. I'm so glad I turned it on my, my database so I won't have an oops moment with my demo. Yeah, I think, I think with the combination of point in time re recovery and on-demand backups, we kind of cover all of the needs for data protection so customers can really protect their data uh, from any kind of an accidental or whatever that might happen and also meet their compliance requirements uh, and satisfy their long-term retention needs. Uh, it's really easy to set up. It doesn't impact the performance of your workload yeah. and you can go out there and back up a terabyte table or a hundred terabyte by table and it'll take one second no matter what. Did you say terabyte and one second? Or a hundred terabyte. I'm blown away. So we have, we have customers with trillion objects in their table. They do on-demand backup and it finishes in a second. So go ahead wow. and try it. Okay, yeah, you guys, wow. <laughs> so that's pretty impactful. That is one to leave uh, the books on it and check it off. So um, we're going to see this great service do great things. How do you guys want to get feedback? Do you want feedback? Tell us uh, how you want to feedback. You guys can always tweet, uh, tweet me at Terra W. Is there a blog or something we Yeah, can we have out? a blog uh, posting about uh, point in time recovery so people can yep. comment on that. Okay. You could uh, you know, use Twitter at DynamoDB and, and uh, you know, we are always watching. We are watching. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> we'll try to creepy, answer. <laughs> yes. In a good way. In a good way. Not yes. in a creepy way? Not Big no. Brother. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, I hope you really enjoy the service. I've turned it on all of my things so I can stop having that oop does the service moment. But we're going to be back. Any questions, tweet us at DynamoDB, Terra W. We're here for you guys. Enjoy the rest of the summit and we'll be back. We're going to take a quick break, just 15 minutes. We need water, we need substance, and then we'll be back live on Twitch. All right, thanks to our customers. Bye, Thank guys. You. Bye.